Have you been debating whether you want the 350 Legend or the 450 Bushmaster? Well, I'm certainly not promising that this video is going to help you with your decision, but if you've ever wanted to know what these cartridges will do to steel, then let's find out. Both of these cartridges are going to be using the Hornady FTX style bullet, obviously in different weights, but let's go ahead and see how much velocity each one is putting out. These are going to be the rifle setups that I use in today's video, and both of them have a 16 inch barrel, and like I said before, both of them are going to be running the Hornady FTX bullet, so it should be one of the fairest tests that I've conducted so far. Well, it looks like with that three-shot group of 165 grain FTX fired out of the 350 Legend, we were getting an average of 2,322 feet a second with a very respectable standard deviation of 9.1. And now it's on to the big boy. Now keep in mind with these numbers, I was only able to get two shots to register, but with that 250 grain FTX fired out of the 450 Bushmaster, we were averaging 2146 feet a second with a standard deviation of 1.4. That is an insane standard deviation, but keep in mind it was only two shots. They say the third time's a charm. And in this case, I really hope that they're right. Say hello to Steel Sled V3 right here. It is making its first debut in a video, and this thing is an absolute beast. So let's go over some specs. First up, we got a wider face for the plate to sit on here. Next, we got a four magnet system, 70 pounds each, so it should be keeping the plate on there. We got a full AR500 frame, minus the handle right here, and minus the equal angle parts right down here. We got a capture system in the back. This plate is at a 45 degree angle and the bullet in steel should essentially go to the back right here and be caught somewhere in the system, unless it bounces out of these holes right here. We might have to modify that at a later point. As I'm sure we're all well aware, in previous videos, the setups that I was using weren't necessarily the best at keeping the plates in place. So I was told by several commenters to add some neodymium magnets to the system. So I really appreciate everybody who commented letting me know about these if they work. As you can see here, the field that I shoot over is full of pretty tall weeds, meaning that I'm not going to be able to see the steel where I normally set it up. And it just so happens that I forgot to bring my riding mower, so I'm going to have to set Steel Sled V3 up in a different area. There we go, that looks pretty good right there. As always, you already know the drill, let's go ahead and get that quarter inch plate set up. There we go. All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and set this plate in that new steel sled. Oh, I think we're good to go. That is one good looking setup if I do say so myself. I think it's finally time to get this testing started off. Well, it's pretty clear that you guys lied to me about the magnets. Literally the first shot and they're already all shattered to varying degrees. This is why we cannot have nice steel slids. Anyways, the 350 Legend went straight through. That's a pretty impressive hole right there. Looks like all we caught was a bunch of slivers of steel down in here. All right, I just added another four magnets on the inside of this plate right here, slightly inset from the face. I thought the other ones were inset too, but I guess the shock was enough to shatter them. Anyways. There we go. If it doesn't work after adding all these magnets, I just give up. Put magnets on, they say. It'll hold, they say. I'm just kidding. I'm not mad at whoever commented about adding the magnets. But anyways, all four of those freaking magnets shattered again. This is insane. But what's even more insane is that the 450 Bushmaster did not penetrate a quarter inch. It left an absolutely massive dent, but it did not go through this quarter inch plate right here. That is one of the first cartridges to not be able to go through a quarter inch plate other than the 300 Blackout. Oh, I am so disappointed with these magnets. Good to go. I think what I need to do is just put a clamp system on there. That way I could just clamp down this plate right here. Anyways, here we go. Absolutely freaking nothing. Same exact dent as before, so that was definitely not a fluke. 
I cannot believe this. All that extra recoil and everything, and it can't even penetrate a quarter inch of mild steel. Pretty disappointing right there. Well, the 350 Legend went pretty cleanly through that quarter inch plate, so let's go ahead and see what it does to a 3 inch mild steel plate. All right, that's pretty good setup right there. Now that one flung the plate pretty good. That's about six feet away from that steel sled right there. But as expected, like other bullet styles in this caliber, it did not go through a 3 8 inch mild steel plate. Still pretty impressive though that it beat the 450 Bushmaster on the quarter inch mild steel plate. Well, I don't even know what to say. First, it was a performance of the Magnets, and second, it was a performance of the 450 Bushmaster. I don't even know anymore. One thing I do know though is that it's time to grind. <laughs> Well, the 350 Legend was only able to penetrate 0.155 inches on that 3 8 inch mild steel plate. But I mean, that's pretty boring if I'm being honest. What I actually want to know is how this monstrosity, absolute beast of an AR-15 cartridge was not able to penetrate a quarter inch of mild steel. So let's take a look at some ballistic charts. Okay, so if we assume that the ballistic coefficients listed on the Hornady website are accurate, the 350 Legend at 50 yards, which is the distance that I was shooting the steel at, has an impact velocity of 2171 feet a second. The 450 Bushmaster, although it's dumping out quite a bit more kinetic energy, only has an impact velocity of 1966 feet a second. And the 300 Blackout, if you can remember from a few of my previous videos, is another cartridge that was not able to go through a quarter inch of mild steel, has an impact velocity of 2,051 feet a second. Notice any trends there? Let me just tell you what I'm thinking. Two of these cartridges were not going above 2,100 feet a second at impact, and one was. That was the 350 Legend, and it was the only cartridge to get through a quarter inch of mild steel. So my theory, based on this information, is that 2,100 feet a second is the absolute minimum velocity needed to get through a quarter inch of mild steel. Steel, but it's possible that with really heavy bullets that are producing a lot more kinetic energy that they'll also get through a quarter inch of mild steel. We'll just have to see about that at a later date. Now obviously if I was going big game hunting the 450 Bushmaster would definitely be the cartridge of choice but I think it's really crazy how it was not able to penetrate a quarter inch of mild steel. Anyways if you want to learn more about how the 350 Legend and the 450 Bushmaster stack up I would definitely recommend checking out my article on Midway USA. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Have you been debating between the 350 Bushmaster and... <clears throat>